Lakers would like to up-tempo this game, obviously, and we're going to see a lot of full-court pressure. Missouri, pretty simple. Man-to-man, -man, get the ball inside to Doug Smith. Tap is controlled by Missouri. Smith's first time touching it, comes up with the jump shot. Hughes tips the rebound long, Smith picks it off. In the middle, Duncan. Carter, little double pump job, won't go down, and Missouri all over the board. It might take a moment or two for Rutgers to settle down and get the high percentage shots they'd like to get in their transition game. The freshman Kudup comes up shooting, and Duncan's got the rebound. Four on three, Rutgers break. Duncan. Kudup trying to keep it alive, and Smith comes down with it. Here we see Smith handling the ball. Warren, he squares up. Both teams cold to start off, and Hughes there for the rebound. Duncan again to run the show. Little hesitation move. Carter tries to again make that Smith from the corner. Weiler, an offensive board. Now if you had Charles Weiler in the lottery as to who the first player to score would be, it would be a long shot right there, but... Nice hustle play by Smith to get back in and break up the pass. You know, Charles Weiler in the starting lineup because Brent, Brent Dabb, the normal starting center, unable to play because of a sprained ankle. There you see Daryl Smith coming in from half court to make a play on the ball. Smith nearly knocking it away from Coleman. Warren near side looking for food up inside. Jamal Coleman, primarily a swing man with this club, forced to be a point guard until Peeler gets back. Fruit up, big time move and a big time rebound by Hughes. Here's Carter, leaving it behind Hughes, tracked down by Smith. Duncan. Wilder again on the board and the foul over the top is going to go against Missouri. Keller will pick it up. Wilder's active early. Off to a great start. You wondered how the freshman would respond to this type of matchup, this type of environment, the bright lights on him as we take a look at Bob Wenzel in his third year as the head coach of Rutgers. But so far, Charles Wilder not being affected at all. Great. Should be up the other end to get the ball in, right? Don't they? It wasn't touched. Yeah, it wasn't touched by anyone. No, here we're going to move it back now, I think. They're talking about it now. Good yep. call, official Gorman. Hey, thanks. Right on top of it. Get you one of those gray shirts. You probably wouldn't go with your tie, though. I'd figure a way. 24th season for Norm Stewart over there on the Missouri bench. And Missouri unable to get it in. Warren forgot that the violation requires that he be stationary inbounding the ball. Took a few steps and thus the turnover. Comes into Duncan. He'll be picked up by Coleman. Warren has got Hughes. That's where Duncan is looking. Hughes comes out to get it on the wing. And knocks down two. He can do it inside and out. Just playing a nice touch on the jump shot there. Leading scorer for the Scarlet Knights. Smith's got help. And I think Hughes got a hand on it. It'll be Missouri ball. Well, you got to like the way Doug Smith at 6'10" able to handle the ball and almost make a good play. Rutgers by four here early. Missouri yet to score in the first 220 of the game. Coleman looking to do some one-on-one -on -one action. Dumps it to Heller. Warren looking inside. Smith baseline turnaround and Missouri's on the board. First two for Doug. A ton of pro scouts here tonight. Most of them with Doug Smith on the top of their list. That's right, but they'll take a good, hard look at Keith Hughes as well. About nine in attendance here tonight. Hughes 
same spot. Not this time. Wyler trying to keep it alive, and he did. It went off Smith. I'll tell you what, Bob Wunder has to be really pleased with the effort he's getting from Charles Wyler. He's going to sit down now, but he's going to get a big hand here. Wyler and Smith go to the bench. Savage and Lumpkin check in. Bob Wenzel with that unique problem of having a lot of talent. <laughs> He's got some players. Donnell Lumpkin, a key guy tonight. If Missouri is able to keep the ball out of the paint, then his perimeter shooting really becomes essential for Rutgers. Duncan turns it over. Mike Jones also has come into the game. So already three minutes in, Rutgers has gone eight deep. This is a very active defensive team now for Rutgers with Mike Jones along with Donnell Lumpkin and Tom Savage able to put pressure on the ball. Mike Jones, really an aggressive defender. He's been slowed a little bit by a stress fracture in his knee. Smith comes up shooting again. Good rebound by Crudup underneath, and he lays it up and in. <laughs> Hello. Hello there, freshman. Young fella, he's got a big-time body, Mike. You told me that. First thing you told me this morning. I shook hands with him, and I rumbled a little bit at how strong the youngster was. Lumpkin outside. Hughes comes up short. Strong rebound. Coleman slapped away out of bounds. Missouri will keep it. Tied at 4, 16, 17 to go first half. Jones aggressively out on Coleman. And Jones oh, ball to reach in. Oh, oh. A little quick there, buddy? A little quick. I can't say what I'd like to say about that. Good pressure here. Good footwork by Jones. Active with the hands. Phantom foul. Couldn't see it, folks. Oh, nice, around high. nice flash by Kudup inside. They missed him. There he is again. Got him this time for two. Rutgers is going to have to make sure they put pressure on the pass. Missouri wants it inside. Lumpkin missing outside. Tracked down by Savage in the corner. Savage, the leading scorer on this club a couple of years ago, then ran into all sorts of academic problems. He's also battling a pulled muscle on his right shoulder, which has kept him from getting the practice time he needs to get in peak condition. Boy, Kudup is active, isn't he? Came in behind, slapped that one away. We get a timeout, 15-25. Left to go here for a tap. And Missouri, after a slow start, leads by two. Let's do it here tonight, Clark. Not at all. Let's throw it inside and get high percentage shots. Coleman inside the crude up. And he finishes nicely with a nice low post move. Neither team really shooting the ball that well, which is not unexpected. First game for both teams as you look at the field goal percentages. The excitement, the adrenaline flowing. Both teams have to idle down just a bit. And I think we'll see that happen here that we've played close to five minutes now. Duncan has gone to the bench and Carter is back in. 2-3 zone by Missouri. Missouri stays with the same five. Lumpkin outside. Coleman his second rebound. Nice to have a guard who can go get it like that. A little 6 5 in the backcourt. You better wade in there and pluck a few boards off. Keller down low, stripped from behind by Lumpkin. Out of the pack comes Savage to Hughes on a wing. Got it to foul. I sat down and chatted with Keith Hughes as we take a look at this play. Excellent play by Lumpkin to get a hand in there and initiate the break. Keith Hughes told me the strongest part of his game was this, running the floor. There you see him finishing nicely, shielding the ball with his body, strong enough to take the foul and get it up and down. Lumpkin with the steal on the other end. This allows Rutgers, if he knocks this down, to set up their pressure. Good trap here. Hughes with five of the seven. Smith there to help out. Well, you can see all the pro scouts writing this down. And Smith handles the ball. <laughs> great. Well, you want foul. It's called on Hughes. You want me to see many 6'10 guys knife their way through traffic in the open court like that. 
The, here's the finish. Hughes trying to get there. Pretty good defensive position. Maybe move just a fraction. Duncan's back in and Jones goes out. So Duncan and Carter now the backcourt for Rutgers. Lumpkin, Savage, and Hughes up front. Doug Smith with his third point of the night. Doug Smith turned down the pose. He was probably certainly a top 10 pick had he left a year ago. Now a surefire lottery pick, barring any injury. And stayed simply to play with these young players, he told me earlier today. Duncan trying to use the screen outside. Hughes rolled to the hoop and was open for a second. Savage knocks down a three. Coleman trying to go on Lumpkin, who's doing a great defensive job and slaps it away. Carter will win the race. Down the middle, rejection by Heller, who got back in the play. <laughs> Boy, showing you some athleticism there. Hughes wants it down low. Lumpkin cranks it up again, way short this time, and Warren just lets it go out of bounds. Lumpkin a little upset about having that initial shot rejected, forced a tough three-pointer, and he's an excellent shooter, right? Good form, good range, but he struggled here early. Bob Wenzel gets him back to the bench, and Darrell Smith comes in. Over the top, picked off by Smith. Great anticipation. Good help is right. From the weak side. Carter comes up, fires. They're going to rain in the threes here for a while. It's 13-8. Heller, if he can find Crudup, he had him. Now blocking foul is going to go. And if that's Hughes, it's two, or is it Smith? Must be Smith. I don't know the way Keith Hughes reacted. It must be him. He's going to take a seat right away, so it's probably Keith Hughes. Here we see Heller in transition, just going to mic up his mind to get it to the cup. And Hughes doesn't shield that baseline. Should have got that right foot on the baseline. Did not and picked up the blocking foul. So a blow for Rutgers as Hughes has to go to the bench. His club up five. Missouri unable to capitalize at the line with 13-10 to go first half. You know, we talked about Brent Dabb, their starting center, the Scarlet Knights starting center, unable to play because of a, of a sprained ankle. And now you can see where he affects this team in the rotation. Now with Hughes out with two fouls, maybe not to come back here in the first half. The lead stays at five as Duncan skips into the forecourt. Weiler back in the game comes high. Savage, Duncan, and Carter out there. They're just going to circle that three-point line. They'll give Duncan an opportunity to clear out and just go one-on-one. -on -one. Nice look by Duncan there. Reject by Kuda. Big time down low. <laughs> Kuda up on the wing, trying to power it up, and Wire stuck him. He got it back and laid it in. <laughs> the young fella is the man. He not only blocked that shot, he took it away in the same motion and then aggressively working at the offensive end to get himself a hoop. Missouri back to within three. Eight minutes gone in the game. In this situation, I think Rutgers would like to clear out for Duncan and let him shake and bake and get inside. Weiler got stuffed and a jump ball is called. Good call. Good offensive board by Weiler. Rutgers will keep it. Here we see Wyler with his third offensive rebound, unable to get it up, though, and the jump ball forced, and Rutgers maintains possession. Melvin Booker first off the bench for Norm Stewart. Booker just started practicing Friday, had an accident. Lost some teeth and had oral surgery. Carter again knocks it down for three. 
two threes from Craig Carter have the lead at six. Savage, the turnover, and the bucket. Pretty move. Missouri wants time. 11.29 to go first half. They are loving it in Piscataway, New Jersey. Rutgers by eight. Dickies thinks you dads out there are pretty special. And we all know there are no two dads alike. Each dad has that special something, could be anything, that makes him different from all the rest. But when it comes to pants, dads don't have to be different. Dickies have that traditional style that never goes out of style, and since 1922, they've been a standard for dads the world over. No matter what kind of dad you have, treat him to a pair of Dickies, available every day at our famous low prices. Dickies for someone special. Made with Fortrell polyester from Fiber Industries. I could take a taxi. No, don't worry, Dad. I'll try with you. Total safety? I suppose we could all stay home or ride around in M1 tanks, but we're working on practical solutions. Honey, we're never going to make it. Dad, will make it. Analog brakes. Standard equipment on more and more of our cars. Rain or snow, you can come to a nice, clean stop. You build someone a safer car, you get yourself a good night's sleep. Well, we made it. You know it all the time. How do you clean the glass? No matter how you do it, nobody cleans the glass like college basketball and Windex. 18-10, Rutgers here. Three-point shots, bit of a difference here. We talked about the guard story for Missouri, and as you can see what they lost, Peeler, 17 a game, Coward, a great playmaker, 11 a game, McIntyre, the pure shooter, 10. That's a lot of points to lose, by. That's a bunch of points. You're talking about 27, 37, 44 points, and also a lot of three-point shooting as well. And he did not have a pencil and paper, fans, when he just did that. <laughs> Here's Booker touching it first time. He's out there with Coleman, Kudup, Smith, and Warren. Jamal Coleman, probably a little more comfortable over on the two-guard spot. He's more of a swing man. Booker, I just mentioned the fact that he's recovering from oral surgery, so therefore his leg not quite under him, another turnover. Smith's doing a great job in the defensive end. Duncan, the pull-up, got it. You know, people look at Earl Duncan and they talk about he's carrying a little extra weight. He's got the kind of body that will allow him to play well at 210, 215. He's a little beyond that now, but he's a talented scorer. Crudup was ahead of the field, takes it on Weiler, counting the foul. <laughs> you love this guy, don't you? Oh, yes. Put your head down and get it to the rack. It is. They're just going to throw over the pressure. Smith over the top to Coleman. Now Crudup straight to the rack. Weiler late getting there. Nice finish by the young fella. First on Weiler. Savage is going to go to the Rutgers bench. Andre Lamoro will make his first appearance. Well, again, with Brent Dabbs being absent. It forces Bob Wenzel to go a little deeper into his bench, but it also gives these guys an opportunity to shine in the spotlight. Oh, Missouri with a little full court pressure now. Press the presser. Nearly thrown away. Good hands there for Carter. It could have been a backcourt. They end up with a three-on-one break. Wyler juggled it, but laid it in. Boy, love the, love the fact that Duncan waited for the big guy to give him a hoop. Blocking foul on Carter. His first, team's fifth. Rutgers with their biggest lead, nine, with 10.22 to go. When 
Wednesday night, 7.30, Coach Rick Pitino leads a team of Mad Bombers who set seven NCAA records for three-point shooting last season against the Cincinnati Bearcats. Lamont Frazier just in and bags a bucket, but Smith answers with authority. right back. He's got 11 clubs. He's keeping him in the game, Mike. There is. 24-17. There's a good steal by Doug Smith. Missouri with some numbers here. Smith himself. Oh, he got hammered. And he had every reason. He had every reason to be upset. He got banged on the night fifth move he made in the lane. No whistle. And then it is an attempt. In his attempt to get the ball back, he picks up the over-the-back foul. In the second half of the doubleheader coming up on Wednesday night, Ball State and Xavier. That one comes at you at 9.30. College basketball. Back and forth on ESPN. Mike Jones back in, number 24. Mark Redden in the game first time. Smith leans out of there and gets it to Frazier. Over to Booker. He's got some room. Knocks it down. Good defensive board leads to an open jump shot at the offensive end. Missouri, bit of a run here, and with 9.09 to go in the first half, Bobby Wentzel wants to talk it over. It's Rutgers 24, Missouri 19. Right now, at all unclaimed freight locations. For holiday spectacular. Right now, buy almost anything for just $15 a month. Or no payments till next May. And get a video rocker free. Kids bedroom group starting at just $66 each piece. Sofas starting at $248. Five-piece contemporary dining rooms, $498. Fully reclining sofas, $598. Buy now, get a video rocker free. And no payments till May. Right now, at unclaimed freight. The nights we shine on, the days we brighten, the spark, the spirit, the hearts enlighten. It's all of us together to play, to love, to play. Here is every promise. Siobhan Crudup, maybe the guy we walk out of here talking about. As good as advertised here. Nice little pull-up J. He's also done his work in the colored area with some nice strong moves inside. 11 of Missouri's 19. The freshman out of Raytown, Missouri. Tell you what, the Missouri pressure has bothered Rutgers a little bit. Been instrumental in this little mini run by the Tigers. Rutgers like 3 of 9 outside the stripe. The Tigers yet to take one. You know, last year there were 22 three-pointers made between both teams. Great look by Redden to find Smith. Missouri will now reset. Smith lost it. Redden's got it. In the middle on the break. Good bounce pass. Defense there by Booker to knock the shot away, but Rutgers will keep it. Mike Jones crowded the hoop. Didn't give himself enough distance to get it up and over the rim. Jeff Warren comes back in for the Tigers, and Doug Smith will get his first rest. Redden, a little fake, leaves it to Smith. Savage kept it alive, and Smith tracked it down, but he stepped on the baseline. Tippy toed the baseline. He tried to pull it back, too, but the official had already seen it. You know, I started to mention the fact that there were 22 three-pointers made in the last year's game between these two teams. 13 by Missouri, 9 by Rutgers. Well, Missouri doesn't have any of those three-point shooters back this season, so I don't expect to see them looking for the three-point shot. Booker got himself in a ton of trouble. Jones forces one up, and an offensive foul is called. Second on Mike Jones. That'll get Carter back up off the Rutgers bench. 
Here we'll take a look. Jones penetrating and leans right into Jeff Warren. Uh, I don't know if Warren was really there, but nonetheless, Mike Jones trying to force it a little too much. He was a little disappointed about that prior situation, that prior no call, and tried to get it back in a hurry. Seven point Rutgers lead, just under eight minutes to go for his half. Offensive foul on Heller. If you are wondering at home, these are three Big Eight officials. <laughs> well, I tell you what, he lowered the boom. I can't see who it was that took the blow, but good defensive work. And I'm not sure Norm Stewart is upset about that. He wants Chris Heller to be more aggressive, to be a little nastier in a positive way at the offensive end. Lumpkin back in the game. Savage thought about it. Nowhere to go, and Warren right there on the ball. Crewed up, and Warren just swallowed up Tom Savage. Tom Savage, with a stop-and-go dribble, dribble went right into trouble. Here it is. And there you see the jump ball forced by Warren. Crewed up again, handling the ball. You sure he's a freshman? <laughs> He's playing with a lot more poise than your typical freshman. Smith back in, misses the turnaround jumper. Warren gets it back out to Booker. Frazier's clapping for it there near side, number 22. Look how Rutgers is sagging in, trying to surround Doug Smith. Not this time. Ooh, reaching. Smith will go to the line. Doug Smith has to really be careful that he doesn't get frustrated. There'll be a man in front, a body coming from the weak side, and he just has to stay within himself, get himself to the line, and not try to force the issue. The last shot he took was a real tough shot against the triple team. That's the seventh team foul on Rutgers, just four on Missouri. That's Smith's great numbers last year, fifth point of this evening. Missouri back to within five. Backing out of the full court pressure. Going man to man now. Frazier's out on Duncan. Good quickness there by Booker, but he couldn't save it. Missouri started with that big lineup, Buck, but they've played better the smaller they got. Well, it always helps to have a ball handler, a true ball handler, or somebody that you can at least designate as your quarterback. And it also improves your quickness at the defensive end where you can get pressure out front. With Lamont Frazier and also Melvin Booker, they've been able to do that. They've been able to apply more pressure defensively on the perimeter. Carter cut into the lane, rejected by Smith, picked off by Frazier. Nice touch patch by Smith, a little too far, though, for Booker. Other way, Carter. Yes, sir. For Craig Carter. Boy, turnovers have hurt the Tigers a little bit here in the first half. Booker's little leaner goes down. Oh, nice control. Four for Melvin Booker, five the lead, and Rutgers has it. And the official wants to get a wet spot down in the lane. Boy, Craig Carter limping off the floor. And I don't know if he pulled something going for that two-handed dunk. He didn't finish it. No, right, he did kind of stall halfway up there. And he's recovering from a broken ankle sustained in last year's Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. He's trying to flex that left ankle over on the bench right now. Duncan comes up and nails it. Second basket by Earl Duncan. See, that's just strength, able to go inside and still be able to get your shot through some contact. Boot up. <laughs> How about the quick release? 13 for Javon. Oh, that was sweet. So this is 
the clear out. This is the spread that they'll run with Earl Duncan. Get everybody else out and let him go to work one-on-one. -on -one. And he throws it away as Weiler went the other way. See, the perimeter guys just have to spot up. All they need to do is spot up because Duncan can get into the paint and either he'll create a shot for himself or get somebody an open jump shot. That time, Wilder was on the move. Warren, a little room on the baseline. Now he gets swallowed up. Booker, good look to find Warren again. Double pump, no, but he draws a foul from Wilder. And Wilder now with two. Wilder, Jones, and Hughes all with two for Rutgers. Smith is going to come back in. Savage will go out. And Lamoureux will check back in. And Wilder will sit down with those two fouls. So. Bob Wenzel keeping all his players with two on the bench. Let's see how long he can keep them there. Free throws are really letting Missouri down here tonight. Down five, it could be a lot closer if they were making that shot. Four-point game. Jones now back in during that free throw, so he will play with two and then turn it over a behind the back move my booker up quickly to smith pull up doug smith and he knocks it down it's a two-point game well i watched him work on that shot all morning this morning in their shoot around and that has to be one of his favorite shots that little medium range jumper on the angle near turnover and it is turned over i tell you what mike melvin booker and lamont frazier have caused the what Rutgers backcourt people some problems with their pressure out front. They've turned the ball over the last couple of possessions. And Missouri's been able to capitalize. Greg Haugen and Tommy Hanks go at it. Lake Tahoe, top right boxing here on ESPN Live on Thursday night, 930. Haugen, former lightweight champ. Had some great battles with Vinny Pazienza in the past. Missouri's first chance to tie this game. They're looking for Smith inside. Rutgers in their 2-3 zone. Defense over the top looking for Smith. He got bodied out, but Warren the loose ball. And he traveled. Good call. Really not a good decision by Booker. The lob really not available that particular possession. Booker and Frazier, though, for a couple of freshmen, along with Crudup, Norm Stewart, as Kidman really may go gray playing all these freshmen. Lumpkin finally hit one and is called for a travel the other way. Bobby Wenzel's incredulous at that call. <laughs> We're going to get a timeout. Bobby's still staring. 3.54 to go first half. Rutgers by a deuce. Look into the sleek design of the Sterling 827 SLI, luxuriously appointed with handcrafted wood, rich in supple Connolly leather. And right now, a Sterling 827 SLI is a most prudent investment. British performance and athletic handling with the finest, most affordable financing starting at 0%. Or lease a Sterling SLI with maintenance included at no charge. No matter how you look at it, it's time to see what it's like to drive a Sterling SLI. What would you say if Pizza Hut served up fully loaded Supreme Pizzas for the never-before-low price of just $6.99 each? Oh, baby, that's what I like! It's the holiday feast deal, so this holiday season, hurry into Pizza Hut for the deal that's got everyone saying... Oh, baby, that's what I like! Hurry into Pizza Hut now for Eureka's Castle Puppets. This week with the purchase of any pizza, your kids can get Eureka for just 99 cents. There are those who thirst for something different. 
something big. Community 28, a quick reminder this telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of the telecast without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Missouri turning it over 12 times here. Rutgers 9 and seems like probably 4 out of the last 5 possessions. Rutgers able to capitalize. Missouri not yet. Jamal Coleman's come back in now for Missouri and Warren will sit down. So Coleman really a small forward here now unless Frazier's going to go up and play that position as Booker and Frazier stay on the floor. Rutgers likes the three. Frazier just barely kept it in bounds, then made a smart play as he threw it off Smith. Frazier, the nephew of the Missouri great Ricky Frazier, All-American for the Tigers. Really knows how to play. Coleman finds Kudup up on the baseline, tries to turn around, got it back, and put it in! He doesn't lack for aggressiveness or intensity. 15 first half points for Javon Crudup, a freshman. Well, we talk, first tie of the first half. Sorry. You know, we've talked about Melvin Booker and Lamont Frazier being key guys for Missouri and making their run, tying the game up after Missouri was down by as many as nine, but Keith Hughes left the game at the 13-minute mark. And this little rally has coincided with his departure and also the entrance of Frazier and Booker for Missouri. Carter pulls it back out. Carter now trying to lay it down. Lamoro got it somehow. Rebound, though, by Coleman. Missouri a chance for their first lead. Booker throws up a three. How about these young guys? Oh, my, Booker, Frazier. <laughs> Mr. Kruda. Seven for Booker, and it's 33-30 Missouri, and they have really quieted this sold-out group of Rutgers faithful. The Rutgers really doesn't have a proven inside player right now, and without Duncan and Hughes on the floor, they just don't have the same scoring punch. Nice look. Amaro trying to dump it further down low. Loose ball out of the pack. Comes Booker. On the baseline, Booker sneaks in, is stopped by Lumpkin, and it'll go back to Rutgers on the alternating possession. Well, I don't know exactly how long it's been, but Rutgers has been parked on 30 for a while. He sure have. Fruit up the freshman with 15, and Craig Carter, the senior guard for Rutgers with eight. But with <laughs> 1.46 to go first half. Look baby. at those eyes of crude up. You just know he's intense and focused. Certainly helps when you've had the kind of first half that he's had. He was thinking it was going to be a lot harder than this. <laughs> I don't know, Mike. Not the way he's come out of the gate. Lumpkin leaves it for Weiler. Nice move with the left hand. Boy, well, good thing he moved it to the left hand. Otherwise... He would have seen that one on his forehead. Doug Smith was right there. Frazier bringing it up against the pressure. Crudup couldn't handle the pass. Boy, Jamal Coleman upset with Crudup. I know you're supposed to catch him if they touch your hands, but that one a little hot for the distance between the players. Rutgers a chance to grab the lead back as we approach the final minute of play here first half. Duncan retreats to reset the offense. Lumpkin trying to lay it down low. Weiler hustles after it. Craig Carter penetrates, has it trapped out of bounds. It'll still be Rutgers ball, 38 seconds on the game clock, 12 on the shot clock. Jeff Warren back in the Missouri lineup. 
Jamal Coleman sits down. And Stewart. <laughs> He's not into it at all. He's about it? three feet out onto the court. Still is. There's not a lot of room on the sidelines here. Norm's been living on the court all night. Smith the rebound. Picked off by Carter, and now Rutgers will take the final shot and a chance to go to the locker room with the lead. I don't know if they know the clock. The shot clock is off. Well, the crowd's going to help them right now. I think you were right. I'm not sure they did. Pull up Smith. It won't go down, and Missouri trailing for most of the first half. Comes back in the final five or six minutes to take a one-point lead as Bobby Wenzel leads the Scarlet Knights back down into the locker room. It's halftime here in Piscataway, New Jersey. 33-32, Missouri. Hojo. Lay right in over there. Oh, I got a strike. Hide line. Hide line. Go. I lost it. The NEC P300. Hello? We made it smaller yeah. and lighter than ordinary cellular Did phones. Did you sign the contract? Great. At least I caught something. Because you can't take the call. If you don't take the phone. Look into a sterling motor car, luxuriously appointed with handcraft. For Missouri on top, Lumpkin, who was a very effective three-point shooter last year, just can't find the stroke at all tonight. Duncan, only four points, and Hughes, only five points. Those two combined for 55 against Missouri last year. Doug Smith dunk it down for him. Volleyball rebound comes to Duncan. Earl Duncan for three. Rebound Lamont Frazier and Kuda. Booker's back on the floor right now. So again, Norm Stewart goes with three freshmen. Kuda. Yes, sir. Huh. It didn't look real pretty, but the result was just well, what you want. Kind of launches that, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little <laughs> shot put effort. Boy, I'm really impressed with this, this young fella. Keith Hughes can't get it down. Big time rebound, Lamont Frazier. Up ahead, he finds Smith. Nice feed for Heller. Better defense by Lumpkin. Smith, the loose ball, and again, it is Daryl Smith who's up there for the block. <laughs> Daryl Smith can hop, Mike. I watched him jump to the top of the backboard yesterday, actually the top of the square in practice, and he's only 6'4". He can really get off the ground. Smith relaxed a little bit with that shot, and Daryl Smith went up and got it. Lumpkin putting it on the floor this time, and food up. That was a man's foul right there, Clark. First on Javon, who wants to get at least one mark in every scoring column tonight. That's one of those forget-me-not fouls. Mr. Lumpkin will know where Javon Crudup is the next time he gets to the hoop. Nice move, though, by Lumpkin, who's known primarily as a perimeter shooter. That time, put it on the floor and got inside and drew the foul. I know you stuck around practice the other day, and you said he was really filling it up. I shot with him for 15, 20 minutes. He's got excellent form, fine rotation. But there's a difference between shooting it in practice and knocking him down in the game. And tonight, he struggled. And a lot of that has to do with the type of shot selection that you employ in game situations. He hasn't really gotten a good shot in rhythm. He's maybe had one in his five attempts that has been one of those good rhythm shots. Rutgers gets four points here in the first five minutes of the second half. They need to score in order to do this. Four court pressure. Yeah. Dribble through a crowd there. Now Booker will set the offense. Comes to Smith. 
Doug puts it on the floor. Power move for two. That's what the pro scouts love about Doug Smith. At 6'10", probably more like 6'9", but he's still able to go out on the floor and put it down and get to the hoop. Earl Duncan. Trudeau cut him off, and he found Hughes. Hughes needed a bucket like that, Clark. His team needed a bucket like that. Excellent penetration and find by Earl Duncan. Booker able to break the pressure. Streaks up and has it tipped away. Three on one the other way. Duncan waits and fires. Lumpkin kept it alive but tipped it to Frazier. Maybe not the shot you want three on two. I know Bob Wenzel likes his players to feel free to shoot it at any time, but in that situation, you're trying to get back into it, trying to come back. Maybe you get something going to the basket. Kruda pops out, puts it on the floor, and the foul will be on Lumpkin. I'm not sure I wouldn't let Javon put it on the floor. Really? <laughs> I mean, he's a freshman. Uh... Alabama struggling to get by Wake Forest, 96-95. Oh, that's a little bit of a surprise, although some experts have looked upon Wake Forest as a dark horse team in the um, ACC. They might be a little better than people expect them to be. Fruit up underneath, can't get it up, and it's ripped out of there by Smith. Boy, I like that, Smith. Active, aggressive, fine athlete. Duncan's pull-up. Rebound, Fruit up. Nearly picked off. Double tip out of bounds off Booker. And your buddy, Daryl Smith, right in the middle of it. See, Rutgers, they've got the crowd back in it now. But they haven't been able to capitalize with a couple of hoops back to back. Here's the effort by Daryl Smith. Just being bothersome and getting in the way. Booker unable to handle it. Nice play by Smith. Mike Jones on the floor now along with Savage. So it's Tom Savage with the ball. And that gives it up to Mike Jones. Craig Carter, Keith Hughes, and Daryl Smith for Rutgers. Warren. Oh, good jump in, but a foul is called by the outside official. Doug Smith thought he had ball. <laughs> and Doug pleading his case with Jim Bain. Here's the penetration. Smith. Oh, my. That's an excellent play on the ball. And Doug agrees. Second on Doug Smith, fourth on the team. Doug Smith's out there with Lamont Frazier, Javon Kudup, Jeff Warren, and Melvin Booker. Carter trying to drive, forces one up. Good weak side rebound. Hughes won't get out. Warren scrapping for it. Well, you've got to get the ball straight in the hoop on these rims. They're very, very snug. You won't find many shooters roll hoops in this gym. Steal by guess who? Daryl Smith. It's a one-point game. And the fans are alive here at Rutgers. Warren had screwed up open. Doug Smith, the trailer, short with the jumper, tracked down by Carter, and he couldn't get it. Couldn't get a handle on it. It'll be Missouri ball. Carter indecisive, and he looks like he's a little shaken up. But Carter indecisive that time. Didn't know whether he wanted to let it go out of bounds or try to reel it in. Well, Daryl Smith goes to the bench and gets a great hand. He won't be there long. Not the way he's playing. Lumpkin back in. Missouri going to set it up now. Try to get it inside to crew up for Smith. Lamont Frazier can't hit the pull-up. Crudup keeps it alive with the tap. Frazier goes and gets it as it's taken away. Crudup ripped it away. And a foul will go on Lumpkin as Doug Smith took it back up. <laughs> Javon kind of went in there to restore order a little bit. <laughs> you can't really teach strength. Here he is, Javon Crudup. To keep it in alive, Frazier puts it on the floor, which is a no-no in traffic. But Kuda just wrestles it away from Lumpkin. And then Smith able to draw the foul. Lumpkin, again, his second. It'll put Doug Smith at the free throw line. 
Smith and Kudup to this point have combined for 30 of the 42. Hughes takes it down. 42-40. Missouri by two. 11.50 to go in the game. Mike Jones leaves it for Savage. Hughes trying to find a spot he can post up. They come the other way. Savage drives through and screwed up. Got him on the way by. Second foul on Javon. That was a flat foot foul. Crudup didn't get his feet active. Out of position and picked up the block. We've got a timeout, 11.34 to go in the game. 42-40, Missouri by a two. for my boyfriend is one of the most impossible things ever. I can't even think of anything that's new or different or will please him. Catch this. It's Sports Illustrated's most exciting Christmas gift ever, the football phone, free with a paid subscription to SI. I would love something like this for Christmas. The football phone works like a regular phone. It plugs into a standard jack and has push-button dialing, on-off ringer, mute button, and automatic redial. I hope she orders that for Christmas for me. And the football phone is free. Now, that's even better. And I don't have to go shopping for it, I hope. What do I have to do to get this? It's free if you get Sports Illustrated at their biggest Christmas savings ever. A year subscription at almost 65% off the cover price. You can be billed after the new year, or you can use your credit card today. I'll buy it for my father, my brother, and my boyfriend. You only pay 99 cents an issue, and the subscription includes all the previews in the swimsuit issue. Sports Illustrated, I should have thought of that a long time ago. So, Mom, if you're watching, please, for once. Don't wait. Call our toll-free number now and get Sports Illustrated at their biggest Christmas savings ever, and get the football phone free. I want this phone. Heck of a game coming up on Sunday night. The Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings, the revived Minnesota Vikings. Herschel Walker playing some great football the past couple of weeks. Both of these clubs with wild card playoff hopes Sunday night. 8 p.m. ESPN Sunday night NFL. We've got just under 12 minutes to go, 42-40 Missouri. They've been hanging on to the lead since about five minutes to go or four minutes to go in that first half after Rutgers dominated the opening 15 minutes of this game. Carter, Hughes, Lumpkin, Jones and Savage on the floor for Rutgers. Warren, Booker, Frazier, Kudup, and Doug Smith out there for Norm Stewart's Missouri Tigers. Missouri coming in ranked 23rd in the country. Rutgers unranked, but thinking they belong. This is as patient as they have been on any trip tonight, but And when they get a foul out of it with 16 seconds on the shot clock, Melvin Booker will pick it up. And that's really not surprising coming out of the timeout. A call play, or at least a discussion as to what type of shot Rutgers would like to get on this possession. Rutgers taking very good care of the basketball here in the second half. Knocked out of bounds by Booker. Carter looks to penetrate. Razor got a hand on that one. Jones now ventures some trip through there. Lumpkin cranks it up. Still won't go for him in the rebound. Booker turns and Carter got him. Second foul on Craig Carter. Here we see the body block. Bang, crash. First down. 
Good hustle by Carter, just a little late getting there. And on a night when Rutgers really needs Lumpkin's outside shooting, he's had a tough time finding the bottom of the net. Here comes Jones. We are tied at 42. Oh, what a great steal. Nice pilfer by Jones. First two points of the night, and Fruta is called for an offensive foul. And Javon now with three. Can we take a look at it? Crudup had enough time. He had a step and a half, a couple of steps. Excellent work. I couldn't quite catch who that was from Rutgers this Carter. Not in his pass. Savage bangs one in from the corner. And a reach-in foul is going to go against Mike Jones. Number three on Jones. Fifteen foul on Rutgers, Missouri already with seven. Jeff Warren hustles back to inbound the basketball. 9.57 to go. The Scarlet Knights have their fans back in the game and a three-point lead. away by Jones and Booker is called for the foul. Well, how about the quick hands of Mike Jones, the last two possessions. He has just stripped Melvin Booker. Look at the defense. It starts with the feet, though. He's in excellent position with his feet. Now watch the hands right there. Just a great play defensively by Mike Jones. He had such good position there with the feet. He was actually a step ahead. That's right. That's right. Good defense starts with the feet. Jones will step to the free throw line. 6'5", sophomore out of Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Led the club in steals a year ago. Oh, a great steal of a rebound underneath by Terrell Smith. It goes out of bounds off Warren. You know, people wonder how could Daryl Smith get inside on the free, for free throw lane. Never should happen. But big, it, bigger isn't always better. Quickness is so important in rebound. Here comes Kudup back in, and Warren will sit down. 9.40 to go in the game. Rutgers by three. Hughes, top of the key, and it was nowhere to go with that dribble. Loose on the floor, put up a great job, but the pass is picked off by Daryl Smith. My goodness, he's had, he's had one of those kind of games that a great linebacker has in football, just all over the place. Rutgers going to run a little double sack here. Nearly a backcourt violation. Jones wasn't aware of where his feet were, but he was over the line. But really, Carter put him in a bad position. Didn't have to make that kind of a pass because the ball was, was live. It had been touched. Rutgers blessed right now as the shot clock is down to seven. That's tipped away out of bounds, and they'll go back to Missouri. Maybe you better just let him free lance. Him. <laughs> They've had a tough time executing. Half-court offense has not executed well tonight. Well, they haven't really been together. You got some guys out there, Mike Jones, Earl Duncan, Tom Savage, that have missed some practice time, that are not in peak condition at this point. Jones coming off knee surgery for a stress fracture of his tibia. Duncan still not in peak condition. And Savage struggling with a uh, torn shoulder muscle. 
Reggie Smith seeing his first action of the night for Missouri. Frazier taking it down the lane. No, the foul before the shot. Earl Duncan picks up his first. Alley-oop, Heller can handle it. Off the floor, Darrell Smith gives it up to Mike Jones. For a good play call, the opportunity was there. Heller just didn't handle it. When you talk about Rutgers struggling with their continuity in their half-court offense, I mean, they really don't have a balanced attack because Brent Dabbs is a guy who can play inside for him as well as on the perimeter on occasion. Savage can't get it down. Lamont Frazier did a great job slapping it away from Hughes. Didn't have much help on the break, though. He resets, finds Crude up in the lane, forces one up, and he'll go to the line. Either Jones or Hughes. Let's see. Either one's going to hurt. It's Mike Jones, and that's four. Here's Crude up inside. He's going to put it down in traffic. And Jones with the reach in, doing what you want your guard to do, get back in the paint area. He's got more arm than ball. Mike not happy as he sits down with four. Mark Redden, the freshman, checks back in. Crude up, unable to capitalize. Well, things have stagnated a little for both teams. Missouri's on offensive scored nine points. That's the tenth point Missouri has scored here in the second half. 7.39 to go in the game, 45-43. Rutgers on top by a deuce. We'll be back. Right now at all unclaimed freight locations. Holiday spectacular. Right now, buy almost anything for just $15 a month. Or no payments till next May. And get a video rocker free. Kids bedroom group starting at just $66 each piece. Sofas starting at $248. Five-piece contemporary dining rooms, $498. Fully reclining sofas, $598. Buy now, get a video rocker free. And no payments till May. Right now at unclaimed freight. Woodbridge Ski Chalet has downhill prices on everything in stock. Skis, boots, bindings from all the famous manufacturers. We have low-priced ski packages for any ability from beginner to advanced. Arrange a seasonal lease or daily rental of junior or adult equipment. Woodbridge Ski Chalet has all the latest clothing at discounts from 20 to 50 percent. There's a slalom of savings that... Low-scoring second half. Rutgers has outscored Missouri 13 to 10 in better than 12 minutes of play. And the shooting percentages reflected here in the second half. Red and skip pass for Duncan. Reggie Smith, the freshman, gets a hand on it to tip it out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you what, Javon Crudup loves to play. He's vocal, he's active, he's intense, and he's pretty good. Savage gets it down the corner for Hughes. See, on ball reversal, somebody has to be ready to pull the trigger. And the ball goes from side to side. Nice look. Very nice look. But a reject down low as Heller got there to block the shot. Reggie Smith the other way. Right side. Crud up with some room. Motors in. Won't go. Tip won't go. Crud up again trying to muffle it out of there. But out of the pack comes Smith. Forcing it up. Darrell Smith for two. Well, Mark Redden stepped out of his left shoe. Trying to get it on now. They give away game ball. Daryl Smith better get one. Savage calls for the foul. Reaching on Heller. Both teams now over the limit. So with 6.25 to go, every foul from here on in free throws. And again, with the new rule this year, eight fouls on Rutgers, eight on Missouri. We get to 10, and it's an automatic two shot. Mark Redden 
the freshman from Dorchester, Massachusetts. I said, I told him I'd say that once each half. Six seconds. Howard makes the first. His first point of the match. I was going to say, he's been a silent man so far this season. Five boards, though. Gets his club back to two. Warren comes back in. Heller sits down. So Warren, Heller, and Kudup will be up front. And the two freshmen, Frazier and Reggie Smith, in the backcourt from Missouri. Frazier man to man up, backs off a bit on Duncan. And Warren has got TQ. Hughes trying to put it on the floor, dribbles into a crowd where they collapse on him very quickly. You know, it's really tough to penetrate against the zone off the dribble unless you swung the ball from side to side. Just to back it out and try to go one-on-one -on -one against the zone, everybody sees you coming, and with a guy like Hughes, he's going to attract a lot of attention. Very lucky and fortunate to get, to get himself to the line here. Keep the struggle tonight. It's been tough. The two fouls early forced him to sit out the better part of the first half. And then against the zone defense, but targeting him anytime he touches it makes it tough as the same has happened with Doug Smith at the other end. Rutgers is showing a lot of zone. And then we can't forget this is the opening game for both teams. They're playing without two of their key players. Anthony Peeler certainly will add a dimension to the Missouri team that both teams in the country won't be able to duplicate with his versatile game. Doug Smith, good bounce pass. Crewed up for two more. 18, uh, make it 19 now for Javon Crewed up. And Missouri He's, back to within two. Crewed up's got one gear. Hard and full throttle to the hole. Redden coming to the ball. Missouri man to man now. Duncan had the three, passed it up. Lost the handle in traffic. It's saved by Reggie Smith. No travel call. And off the leg of Mark Redden. Mark Redden. Yeah. And that's never a good sign. Let's see if we can spot it. Duncan right passes up a shot here. And now in traffic, loose ball, and we can't. Mark Redden actually had gotten hurt. If we can rewind that for a second. Prior to and, the scuffle. And watch the right-hand corner of your screen. Mark Redden being helped up right now, which is right knee. And what he does, Mark, is he just kind of moves the wrong way. We have to take another look at that replay and, and watch the right side of the screen. Right. That was before that even, guys. Hate to make you do it, but if you just go back a little further, you can see, you actually see Mark Redden twist his knee. Because when he came back into the play, he was limping. He was up now, and they are helping him to the bench. Bob Wenzel had been making almost offensive and defensive substitutions, trying to protect Mike Jones with four fouls, running Redden in and out. He'll have to go elsewhere now. Craig Carter comes back in. He'll be in the backcourt with... Duncan, Hugh Smith, and Savage up front. Reggie Smith handling the ball here a lot in the second half for Missouri. Well, I guess that's the one benefit to Peeler's absence is these young players get an opportunity to, to grow. Boot up. Got a real gift right there. 21 now for the freshman. And we are tied at 49 with just under five to go. Duncan calls the play. Savage pops out, wants it. Savage for three. Smith, good dish that time, and Doug Smith with his 15th point of the night. Well, excellent play by Reggie Smith.
Missouri predominantly man-to-man -man here in the latter portion of this second half. Doug Smith coming to help. Streaks up the sideline himself, and Savage just tried to push him out of bounds. Smith turned and wanted an intentional foul and uh, had a case there. Third foul on Savage. And Rutgers is going to take a timeout. Bobby Wenzel wants to talk it over. 4.02 to play. And Rutgers hanging on to the one-point lead. 52-51 Scarlet Knights. Back with more in a moment. See him reach down, and that's where he injured his knee. Well, that's a freak injury. And now he is over there on the sidelines with that ice pack on. You're hopeful in that situation that it's nothing more than a sprain. But you probably won't know that until later on tonight. Doug Smith, 16th point. Hard-earned 16. They haven't come easily. Ties the game at 52. Loose underneath. It's going to be Rutgers ball. Somebody had a foot on the baseline. I think Reggie Smith, when he retrieves that miss, bounced it along the baseline. Wet spot, and Earl Duncan took a terrible fall, fall there. He and Reggie Smith both. Well, Duncan is really trying to shake it off out around half court. Well, that just looked like it hurt. Here we'll see it. Duncan, number three in white. Smith down first, and then Duncan just bends that left knee underneath. Ooh. Earl wasn't made to do splits like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Earl Duncan will go out. Daryl Smith, Tom Savage, Hughes, Mike Jones with four fouls, and Carter on the floor right now for Rutgers. Tied at 52. Smith looking inside. Hughes was open. Gets the ball. Blocked by Kuda. Picked off by Doug Smith. Leads the race himself. Swoops in. Won't get out. Loose is Frazier. He's stripped underneath. Out of the pack comes Carter. Gets to the middle on the break. Good look for Hughes. Nice job by Craig Carter on that break. Excellent vision, nice execution of the three-on-two. Keith Hughes is getting himself into a little trouble by going to the rhythm bounce when he catches it in the paint. Here we'll see the tail end of the break. Carter in transition. Hughes on the right, running the floor. And Carter with a nice dish. Excellent choice of pass. No other pass would have gotten there. The bounce wouldn't have gotten there. Good look by Carter. The third on Jeff Warren. The 10th team foul, so all fouls now on Missouri will result in two shots for Rutgers. And the same will be true on the next Rutgers foul, too. So the rule change this year, all fouls, 10 and above, automatic two shots. That one really wouldn't have mattered since Hughes was in the after shooting. Keith now with 11, the Scarlet Knights by two. Reggie Smith in a bit of trouble. Ooh, and a foul is called. Savage is going to pick it up. Boy, you really don't want to commit a foul there. You've got the offensive player on his heels. That's the trap. Yeah. Reggie Smith is going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, he had it in reverse. Reggie the freshman will get to the line. Out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Maybe. Trip all the way out to Missouri to go to school and play under Norm Stewart. Well, I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen more of Melvin Booker, although we have to wonder about his conditioning yep. because he's only been practicing for the last four days, but I thought he did a solid job along with Frazier in that first half.
Earl Duncan back. And Craig Carter will sit down. Duncan had bone spurs removed from his ankle this summer and is playing with a little extra weight as a result of having to be laid, having to be laid up in his rehabilitation and recovery period. Duncan and Jones exchange. And now Duncan to set up the offense. Smith comes out to give him a little screen, now heads the other way. Keith Hughes for three, got it outside! Big bucket by Hughes! Dal Smith picks up a foul in the backcourt. Really a tough call against Smith, but anytime you've got a player along the sideline, you like to turn him back to the middle. Don't let him turn the corner on you. Two minutes, 53 seconds to go, 57, 53 Rutgers. But Reggie Smith, one of two at the line, back there again. Well, how about shooting into that sea of red? Nice to see the young fella come back after going one of two his last trip. There you see those red sweaters and shirts and waving arms. 57-55. Right there's the lead in the ball. Lamont Frazier in the game with Smith in the backcourt for Missouri. Oh, Jones, a move to the hoop, but Smith got back in the play. <laughs> what a nice recovery yeah, out guy. there isolated like a defensive back and made a nice recovery to deny the basket. I think Hughes would probably like to get it in his hands again. Usually your marquee players want shots late in the game. Hughes again, short this time, rebound. Smith saves it. Oh, how'd he get there that quick? Oh, bad pass. Hughes picks it off. Smith looking for Warren. That had to cover a lot of court, but. Well, you chalk that one up to experience. Part of the education of the freshman. Norm Stewart waving his club back. Doesn't want him aggressive. Two-point game. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Rutgers content to milk the clock. Probably will go through their spread. Missouri in a man-to-man. -man. Duncan able to create here. Oh, good look. Jones got three. And Duncan found him. The play of the night as far as Rutgers is concerned. 59, 55, 90 seconds to go here in New Jersey. Performance, uh, endurance, elegance. What more can anyone ask of a luxury car? a bit, actually. Rutgers by four, Earl Duncan with the biggest play of the young season, Clark. This will make you scream and holler here. Watch the look on by Earl Duncan. People moving. He's going to shake and bake a bit. 
Now he's going to find Mike Jones, number 24. He's going to look to his left, but a bullet pass to the wide open Jones inside. Doesn't get any sweeter than that, Mike. Jones was open for about a five count under the hit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody lost him, no doubt. And Earl Duncan found him. And Rutgers really capitalizing on those turnovers by Missouri. Norm Stewart was kidding Clark and I before the game. He said, you guys sit courtside, you may need helmets. The way my guys throw the ball around. Well, well that's certainly in reference to his young, unproven backcourt. And they've had a tough time over here tonight, although their front court players have turned it over a little bit too. Reggie Smith looking for help, and he throws it away. Picked off by Smith, but he can't save it. And Doug Smith comes out and puts an arm around the freshman, Reggie Smith, and says, look, there's only one other guy out here named Smith. Keep it away from him. <laughs> And here's a guy that we haven't seen very much of in the second half who did an outstanding job in half number one. Booker back in. North gets two. the ball. Melvin spins, throws it up, gets it blocked. Loose underneath. Out of the pack. Jones looks and finds. Smith won't go down. Hughes rejected big time with the foul. And I think it's going on Warren, not that Smith but it will be a foul against Missouri. You have to live with some mistakes by your young players. Booker forces a tough shot. The long board, Jones to Smith. He's not able to finish, but Keith Hughes trailing the play nicely, able to draw the foul. And I think it was Doug Smith who came over the top. Doug Smith upset not about the foul. Gave the foul to Warren. They actually did give it to Warren. Yeah, they did. But Doug Smith actually upset not so much about the foul as he was about the shot at the other end. 15 now for Keith Hughes, 10 in the second half. Rutgers by five with 61 seconds to play. Missouri now not was really a proven three-point shooter. I look for maybe Booker to take a look at it, maybe even Doug Smith. Norm Stewart won't take a timeout. Smith might have got away with a little walk, comes up shooting. Loose Hughes coming up big in the final minutes, and he's fouled by Doug Smith with 45 seconds to go. And they feel it here at Rutgers. Sports Center immediately following this game. 12 in a row now for the Blazers. Lisa Olsen ruling coming down from the NFL and lots more. Sports Center is next. That was uh, Mark Redden. They were just taken to the locker room there. And again, we hope the young man from Dorchester does not have a serious knee injury. Hughes has had a big final five minutes here. 17 now. Bobby Wenzel can afford to smile a bit. Seven point lead, 45 seconds to go. And they are dancing on the Rutgers sideline. They know how to have fun in here, these fans. The Tigers got to put up a three or two. Fraser leans in, gets two. And Earl Duncan fouled immediately by Lamont Fraser. 22 seconds to go in the game. A team that two years ago in the NCAA, some very high expectations last year, and chemistry is something of a problem, plus a very tough schedule. They finished the year 18 and 17, but right now, feel 
They are making a statement knocking off Missouri, ranked 23rd in the country. One of those credibility wins, and it removes the stigma of being Ofer on national TV, as Craig Carter reminded me earlier. Ofer four last year on the two. Frazier buries a three, and now Norm Stewart does want a timeout. Seven for Lamont Frazier, but more importantly, it is 64, 60, 15 seconds to go. And Rutgers may have to make a free throw or two here if they can assault this away. It certainly will probably come down to that. You mentioned the fact that Rutgers struggled with chemistry a little bit a year ago. In defense of Bob Wenzel and his program, you talk about bringing in two transfer players that are going to play significant minutes on a team that went to the tournament the year before them becoming eligible to play and you talk about mixing two very good players with a pretty good team and it's much easier to do that on paper and in preseason magazines and polls than it is on the floor and I think that was part of the problem and again it's going to be part of the problem a little bit this year tough schedule Brent Dabbs goes down and he's a cornerstone for this team in terms of his defensive presence his ability offensively some injuries they've had to fight through so all of that is probably going to take place in the next three to five weeks before this team really is able to find its rhythm and, and come together. It's going to be a very good basketball team when, Brett, when Dabs is back and comfortable on the floor. One more reminder about Sunday night, the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings, a revived Herschel Walker. And both of those teams with playoff hopes. It's the Pack and the Vikings. 8 p.m. on Sunday night. Rutgers just needs to make sure they get it in, squeeze it, and expect a foul. Comes in to Duncan. Couldn't get it ahead quick enough. They would have had an easy two. Instead, Earl Duncan will go to the line with 15 seconds to go. Freshman picks up the foul. Norm Stewart, a streak of opening day, opening night wins. About to come to an end here, and Duncan will be at the free throw line. Don't forget, Sports Center immediately following this game. Full night of NBA action. Lots of college basketball tonight. Rulings coming down from the NFL. They will have it all. Only six points for Duncan tonight, but he's played well. He has played pretty well. He's made some big plays. And one pass to Jones. I like film material there. Six-point game, and Missouri throws it away, and that is just about going to do it. The Tigers needed a couple of quick threes. Now Rutgers will get it back right at the end of the floor. They want it. Comes in a dunk. Reaching foul, Reggie Smith again will put Keith Hughes at the line with 10 seconds to go. This has become a prolonged celebration for both the Rutgers players and their fans. And <laughs> yeah, they're milking it.
All right, Michael, thank you very much. And the party's on in Piscataway. And remember that last year when Missouri was number one, Rutgers almost pulled off the upset in Columbia. This year they do the job at home, 68 to 60. Coming up next, it's Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Gary Miller, among other stories. They'll follow the Trailblazers as they try to start out the NBA season 12 and 0. And a reminder, tomorrow night we are the Cincinnati Kids.